So electrons were discovered in 1897 by J.J. Thomson when he was studying the properties of cathode rays. Okay. So before this, uh, before J.J. Thomson, William Crookes, another British scientist, had performed an experiment to study the phenomenon of electric discharge through gases. He observed that when an electric current of high voltage was passed through a discharge tube, uh, containing a gas at a very low pressure, rays were emitted from the negative terminal curl cathode. He called these rays cathode rays. So why he called these rays as cathode rays? He called these rays as cathode rays because it was coming out of the cathode. Cathode means negatively charged plate. So the uh, rays were coming out of the cathode of the uh, cathode of the voltameter. So, cathode of the electrolytic cell, cathode means negatively charged plate and the rays that were coming out of cathode he named cathode rays. So, who named these rays as cathode rays? It is William Crookes and later on when J.J. Thompson was studying about the properties of cathode rays, then, then he, is, he could prove that these cathode rays are negatively charged because they were deflected from uh, they were def deflected from the positive plate when he tried it. When he uh, when he passed these cathode rays through uh, electric pole, through electric pole, they got uh, they got attracted towards positive pole. Sorry, they got attracted towards positive pole, and they were deflected from negative pole. So as we know that light charges repel and unlike charges attract. So here, cathode rays were attracted towards positive pole. And they were deflected from negative pole, which proves that cathode rays are negatively charged. Hence, these cathode rays are negatively charged. That was proved. Then J.J. Thomson started. Then J.J. Thomson started the characteristics and the constituents of the cathode rays and concluded that cathode rays consist of negatively charged particles. Then he came to know that cathode rays consist of negatively charged particles and now called electrons. So later on it was called electrons. So how he could say that cathode rays are negatively charged? Because when he allowed these cathode rays to pass through electric field, then they got attracted towards the positive pole of electric field and they got deflected from negative pole of the electric field. Then he came to know that the cathode rays are negatively charged. So uh, these are present in atoms of all the elements. So now called electrons which is present in atoms of all the elements. Then let's see about the properties of electrons properties of electrons. Electrons are an integral part of all atoms. Integral part means they do not exist outside an atom. They do not exist outside an atom. That means they are part of atom. Without electrons, atom does not exist. As a result, it is called an integral part of all atoms. For example, heart. Heart is integral part of our body. Without heart, we cannot survive. Similarly, electrons are integral part of all atoms. Number one. Number two, its properties are independent of the nature of the gas in the discharge tube. So whatever gas you keep in the discharge tube, that means the tube where you are observing the nature of the uh, cathode rays, that does not affect the properties of electrons. So its properties are independent of the nature of the gas. For example, you are passing hydrogen gas. For example, you are passing oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, whatever gas you pass through discharge tube, they have electrons and properties of electrons are same. Then how you may say, you may think how then different atoms are different. Then the properties of different atoms are different. The properties of different atoms are different because of the because of the different number of electrons protons and neutrons but properties of electrons in all the atoms is same okay properties of electrons in all the atoms in all the elements is same 
they are differing in different elements only because of the or because only because of the difference in number of electrons protons and neutrons but if you see individual electron then the property of electron is identical in all the elements an electron has a definite mass and it carries a definite electric charge electron is a matter so it has a definite mass and it carries a definite electric charge the mass of an electron has been found to be 1 by 1837 of the mass of a hydrogen atom that means mass of an electron is 1837 times less than the mass of a hydrogen atom so its mass in gram is 9.108 into 10 to the power minus 28 gram its charge is 1 that means one unit negative charge it is considered unit negative charge and if you express this charge in coulombs then it is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb these are some of the figures you need to know you need to learn an electron is denoted by the symbol e superscript 0 so this superscript 0 means its mass is negligible and this minus 1 represents its charge so the superscript 0 represents its mass and the subscript minus 1 represents its one unit negative electric charge then let's see about the discovery of protons the presence of the negatively charged electrons in an atom suggests that it must contain positively charged particles as well otherwise an atom would not be electrically neutral so how they got the idea that there must be some positively charged particles in an atom because an atom is electrically neutral so it can be electrically neutral if there is positively charged particle also because negative and positive makes zero minus and plus makes zero so for making neutral neutral means zero for making atom neutral if there is negatively charged electrons then there must be something which is positively charged that means there must be some positively charged particles otherwise an atom would not be electrically neutral these positively charged particles were discovered by E. Goldstein so finally this po so electron is represented by E and subscript superscript minus Proton is represented by P and superscript plus. So, who discovered electron? J.J. Thomson. Who discovered cathode rays? It is William Crookes. And who discovered protons? It is E. Goldstein. Then protons are positively charged. Protons are positively charged. Then let's see about the properties of protons. The mass of a proton was calculated as being equal to the mass of an atom of hydrogen. So, uh, mass of electron when we were talking about mass of electron is 1837 times less than the mass of hydrogen atom. But, mass of proton is equal to the mass of an atom of hydrogen that is 1.672 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram. So, mass of proton is 1837 times more than the mass of electron. So, mass of electron is negligible as compared to mass of a proton. Then the charge on proton is equal to the negative charge on an electron. Mind you one thing, mass of electron is negligible as compared to mass of elect, uh, proton. But, charge on electron is equal and opposite to the charge of a proton so the positive charge on a proton is equal to the negative charge on an electron that is that is charge on proton is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb plus okay so charge is equal and opposite Positive uh, protons will have plus 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb, whereas electron will have minus 1.062 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs. So this is the property of proton. Then 
then protons are denoted as superscript p superscript 1 subscript plus 1 so this uh, superscript 1 means atomic mass unit 1 amu and subscript plus 1 represents one unit positive charge one unit positive charge then then let's see about thomson's model of the atom so thomson's after discovering electron he gave atomic structure he guessed okay he guessed atomic structure he gave atomic structure so let's see how is his atomic structure now the question arose as as to how protons and electrons were arranged in an atom so once proton and electrons are discovered then scientists started thinking that how they are arranged in an atom then first one to give first one to think that this may this must be the way in which uh, electrons and protons are arranged in an atom is jj thompson so the first model for an atom was worked out by jj thompson and his model for an atom is called plum pudding model so what he thought is this is his structure what he thought is uh, positively charged and positively charged uh, particles and negatively charged particles electrons they are uniformly distributed he thought that uh, the positively charged particles protons and negatively charged particles electrons are uniformly scattered so according to this model an atom is a positively charged sphere in which electrons are embedded just like dry fruits are distributed in a pudding so in a pudding how uh, this one how uh, dry fruits are distributed the same way he thought that uh, this one the electrons and protons are distributed in an atom so his model is called plum pudding model since the total positive charge of the atom was equal to the total negative charge of its electrons it followed that an atom would become negatively charged if it gained electrons and positively charged if it lost electrons so an atom would become negatively charged if it gained electrons and positively charged if it lost electrons however this model failed to explain many experimental observations about atoms Hence, Thomson's model was not accepted. So, uh, it was the first attempt by any scientist to give how, to think about how atom, how atom, uh, in how electrons and protons are distributed in an atom and how is the structure of atom. So, it was his first try, though it could not uh, explain many things. Yeah, later on it was not accepted but then also he did his level best and he said that uh, since the since there are equal number of electrons and protons if one of the electron is removed then the atom will be positively charged and if it is lost if it is if the electron is gained then the atom will be negatively charged so this was the first structure given by jj thompson then then discovery of the nucleus so in 1911 lord rutherford a scientist from new zealand conducted an experiment in order to find the arrangement of electrons and protons in an atom his experiment led to the discovery of a small positively charged nucleus in the center of the atom so in 1911 lord rutherford a scientist from new zealand conducted an experiment in order to find the arrangement of electrons and protons in an atom so what happened is after the model of after thomson's model of the atom as he said electrons and protons are uniformly distributed in an atom so lord rutherford did one experiment okay one experiment and he came to know about a positively charged nucleus in the center of the atom so let's see about his experiment in a very short so rutherford's alpha particles scattering experiment 
Rutherford bombarded a thin sheet of gold of 0.00004 cm thickness with alpha particles in an evacuated chamber. Alpha particles are positively charged particles with two units of positive charge and four units of mass. So what is an alpha particle? Alpha particles are positively charged particles with two units of positive charge. That means there are two positive charges and there are four units of mass. That means its mass is 4 amu. Okay. Alpha particles has plus two unit plus two charge. Okay, two protons and mass of uh, mass of uh, alpha particle is 4 amu. Then this alpha particle was bombarded. That means this alpha particle was allowed to collide with a thin sheet of gold and thickness of the gold is 0 0.0004. So you must be thinking why, go, why he took gold only because gold is highly malleable metal which can be brought to this thickness also. Rest of other metals may break into this thickness, but gold does not. So this is, this is the diagram. So what happened is this beam of alpha rays, you can see this beam of alpha rays are passing through this gold foil. And what he could observe is maximum alpha rays were passing without any deflection they were going straight okay say for example there is a fencing fencing and uh, you are closing your eyes and throwing a stone so uh, what happened is maximum number of stones will pass without hitting anything so same thing happened in this experiment also and few few of the stone that you are throwing up uh, closing your eyes may hit the wire and return back and few may get deflected. The same thing happened here. So what happened is a very, very, very less number of alpha rays bounced back. And a few were deflected after hitting the, after hitting the golden uh, gold foil. And maximum number of alpha rays passed without any deflection. So you can see these are undeflected alpha particles. And small deflection you can see and this is a strong deflection so what he could observe after this experiment let's see most of the alpha particles passed straight through the foil without any deflection from their path so maximum number of alpha particles pass straight without any deflection from their path a small fraction of them were deflected from their original path by small angles only a few particles bounced back. On the basis of these observations, Rutherford made the following conclusions. Most of the space in an atom was empty because alpha particles went straight. So what he could make the conclusion after going through this observation is that most of the space in an atom was empty. That means as per uh, Thomson, what he said is uh, positively charged and ne negatively charged particles are uniformly distributed and that is 100% wrong because uh, protons, though electrons has negligible mass, but proton has a mass of one unit. So if alpha rays strike the protons then it will get deflected but it is not deflecting it is passing through straight means there is no proton in use space of an atom there was a happy positively charged mass and only few of them were deflected okay there was a happy positively charged mass in the atom which caused deflection of small fraction of alpha particles say for example you are running and in your path there is a stone so what happened is if you happen to strike with that stone, you get deflected or you will bounce back. <coughs> but if there is nothing, then you, you go straight. So same thing is happening here. If there is proton on the way of alpha rays, then it will bounce back or it, it will get deflected. Since it is passing straightly, that means there is no protons in maximum area, in maximum space of an atom. So 
a small fraction okay so there was a happy so he could conclude that there was a happy positively charged mass in the atom which caused deflection of a small fraction of alpha particles the positively charged mass is very small and is centrally located because only few particles bounce back it was named as the nucleus of an atom so what he said is what he concluded is the positively charged mass is very small why he could say it is very small because only few particles bounced back so it is bouncing back because it is striking striking to a mass to a dense mass so he could say that there is a small very small okay it's very small uh, centrally located uh, positively charged mass it was named and then he named it nucleus of an atom he named it nucleus of an atom then rutherford's atomic model so then after his experiment he gave he gave his model to an atom okay his atomic model so what he said is uh, according to this model according to rutherford's atom so this is rutherford's atomic model so first we learned is thomson's atomic model that is plumb model in which electrons and protons were uniformly distributed and this is rutherford's atomic model so according to this model an atom consists of mainly two parts they are the centrally located nucleus the nucleus is a centrally located positively charged mass the entire mass of the atom is concentrated in it so he said the entire mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus it is the densest part of the atom because electrons are uh, elect the mass of electron is negligible which are surrounding the nucleus the size of the nucleus is very small compared to the size of the atom as a whole so if you think atom as a whole then nucleus is very 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 small if we consider a circular stadium as an atom then its nucleus is no more than a cricket ball placed at the center of the stadium so you can imagine a huge circular stadium as an atom but but nucleus is no more than a cricket ball placed at the center of the stadium so now you can imagine how small is nucleus and how big is atom so one part is the centrally located nucleus and the other part of an atom is the outer circular orbits the outer circular orbits so electrons revolve in circular orbits that is called shella in the space available around the nucleus so what he could say that electrons are revolving around this nucleus an atom is electrically neutral that is the number of protons and the number of electrons present in an atom are equal so an atom why the atom is new electrically neutral the number of protons and the number of electrons present in an atom are equal so this is his uh, model this is rutherford's atomic model which contains two parts uh, that is the central located nucleus which has the maximum mass which is the densest part of the atom and which is very small as compared to the to the size of an atom and there is uh, outer circular orbits in which electrons revolve around the nucleus so this is rutherford's atomic model and then and then let's see about the discovery of neutrons so in 1932 James Cadwick discovered this subatomic particle and called it neutron. So, who discovered neutron? James Cadwick. So, let's see again who discovered electron? J.J. Thompson. Who discovered proton? E. Goldstein. Who discovered neutron? It is James Cadwick. Then, who discovered nucleus? It is Rutherford. Then, uh, it had no charge. It had no charge. So, <coughs> it had no charge okay electrons are positively charged and then protons are electrons are negatively charged protons are positively charged and neutron has no charge but its mass is almost equal to that of a proton so mass of uh, 
neutron is almost equal to that of a proton it is slightly bigger than the mass of proton so properties of neutrons the mass of a neutron is slightly more than that of a proton it is 1.676 but mass of proton is 1.672 that means mass of neutron is 0 0.004 gram bigger than the mass of a neutron electrically a neutron is neutral it has no charge atoms of same element may differ in the number of neutrons leading to the formation of isotopes so atoms of same element may differ in the number of neutrons and if if number of neutrons in the atoms of same element are different then they are said to be isotopes they are said to be isotopes so this is the discovery of neutron and then let's see about the properties of subatomic particles in detail so electron symbol my in e sub superscript zero subscript minus one or it can be said as e minus then charge on electron is minus one and in coulomb it is 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 then mass in gram 9.1 in 10 power minus 28 gram that is the mass of electron then then proton charge plus one so equal and opposite electron and proton and the mass is 1.6 in 10 power minus 24 gram and mass of neutron is also 1.6 in 10 power minus 24 gram then the charge on neutron is zero and it is symbolized by small n an atom of hydrogen contains only one proton and one electron but no neutron so can you name an atom which contains no neutron then that is hydrogen so hydrogen is an atom is an element which has no neutron all other atoms have all the three particles except hydrogen so hydrogen is the simplest element because it do not contain its atom do not contains neutron then let's see about the stability of atom structural stability of an atom <coughs> structural stability of an atom we know that there exists a force of attraction between particles with opposite electric charges so we know that unlike charges attract each other unlike charges attract each other okay unlike charges attract each other that means positively char positive charge attracts negative charge and negative charge attract positive charge and vice versa thus there is a force of attraction between the electrons and the protons present within an atom so there is force of attraction between the electrons and the protons present within an atom because they have equal and opposite charge it is expected that electrons being lighter charged and in constant motion would gradually lose energy and come closer to the nucleus and eventually fall into it thus resulting in the structural collapse of the atom but this does not happen so Rutherford actually what happened is as per Rutherford Rutherford was saying that electrons revolve around the nucleus and if it is so then electrons having a charge electrons having a charge and revolving around the nucleus may lose its energy and if it go, if it continuously lose its energy then it will come close to the nucleus and finally it will fall into the nucleus as a result atom will collapse but you know atoms are not collapsed atoms exist means means the fourth model is also failed his model could not explain stability of an atom so Rutherford could not explain the stability of atom so it was finally explained by Niel Bohr okay Niel Bohr could explain atomic stability so what is the failure of Rutherford model Rutherford model could not explain the stability of atom this is only the failure of Rutherford and who could explain the atomic stability it is it is Niel Bohr who could explain the atomic stability then model modern model of 
an atom is given by Rutherford or given by Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr, okay. So as as this one, as Rutherford model is failed because it could not explain the stability of atom, so uh, so modern model of an atom is discussed, and this modern model of an atom is given by Neil Bohr. According to the modern standard model of atom, an atom consists of the subatomic particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons. But in Rutherford's time, neutrons were, was not discovered. So, an atom model, a modern model of atom says an atom consists of the subatomic particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons. There are two structural parts of an atom that is the nucleus and the orbits are the cells extra nuclear part present in the empty space that surrounds the nucleus and number three the nucleus is the positively charged central part of an atom it contains protons and neutrons the protons and neutrons collectively known as nucleons so what are nucleons nucleons are protons and neutrons present in nucleus they are held firmly in the nucleus by strong nuclear forces so these protons and neutrons are held inside the nucleus by a strong nuclear force the entire mass of an atom lies in its nucleus since electrons have negligible mass the positive charge of the nucleus is due to the protons present in it so uh, nucleus are positively charged nucleus are positively charged so why nucleus is positively charged because of the presence of protons in it and neutrons have no charge as a result nucleus is positively charged the protons remain unaffected by the neutrons since the latter have no electrical charge so why uh, the positive charge in proton is unaffected because neutron has no charge neutrons has no charge then number four orbits or shells are the imaginary paths actually they are not there but it is imaginary path through which electrons revolve around the nucleus each orbit is associated with fixed amount of energy now and now what was the drawback of the Ford model he could not say that the different shells have different energy level but Neil Bohr could say that different uh, different shells have different energy level as a result all the electrons do not jump towards the nucleus and hence will not collapse so therefore these circular orbits are known as energy levels or energy shells electrons revolve around the nucleus in these orbits the cell or the orbit lying closest to the nucleus carries the lowest amount of energy and the cell that lies farthest from it carries the highest amount of energy so <coughs> the cell that is lying very close to nucleus has low amount of as minimum energy and the shell that is lying uh, farther from the nucleus will have maximum energy an atom is electrically neutral because the number of protons and the number of electrons present in it are the same thus balancing the total charge of the atom so while the neutral of neutral atom of an element has an equal number of protons and electrons this number itself varies from one element to another in fact no two elements contain the same number of protons or electrons that is why each element differs from the other in its properties so <coughs> different element differs in their properties because of uh, the different number of protons and electrons and no two elements contain the same number of protons and electrons that means if an atom x has 16 protons then element y cannot have 16 protons so this is the reason why they are different because the number of protons and electrons in them are because the number of number of uh, protons and electrons in them are different so uh, this much for today thank you